What's up everyone? I'm Persia and I'm here with Buddy and we are reacting to the Immortals Phoenix Rising trailer. And I mean, we haven't seen it yet, but let's go ahead and check it out right now. Let's get into it. Ooh, hero landing. Yo, this funky Minotaur is about to kill you. Oh, get him, girl. Oh! Lightning hammer. <laughs> And big boss battle with Medusa. She's definitely got some tricks. She's the phoenix that rises. I felt the build up like in my heart right there. Okay guys, so that was the announcement trailer. Now we have 11 minutes of gameplay from Ubi Forward. So let's get into that. The narrator starts out that this is a tale of the gods told by the gods themselves, and at the end of the gameplay, we see that Zeus is standing in front of Prometheus. We find out that uh, they're the narrators. Zeus is a comedian, apparently, and, and Prometheus is the uh, straight man. So a little bit of comedy to go with a little bit of like the seriousness and kind of having them both almost feel like, you know, good and bad on your shoulder. It sounds really fun. Like Prometheus, Typhon is a titan. Just this monster dude and he has caused corruption throughout the land. You can see, you know, that red stuff is the corruption of Typhon. And you can see that, like, a lot of the monsters are bearing, like, that red corruption as well. Like, Typhon has got to, you know, the Cyclops and the, the Geonies and, and uh, you see that Minotaur. It's throughout the land, and Phoenix is tasked by the gods to uh, kind of reverse some of that corruption. It's clear here that Typhon is upset, and the more we're taking people out, the more we're getting rid of all of his little goons. He's just sending more people after us and stronger people on top of that. Yeah, I mean, it says he's sending some dead heroes after us, and I mean, Greek mythology is, is, is so thick with possible heroes, some of which were using their weapons anyway, so they might be <laughs> more mad at us. If you look at the map, you see that there's a lot of like references to Greek mythology, but they don't take it, a lot of it seriously. I mean, you, the gates of Tartarus, obviously Tartarus is, is, you know, the underworld kind of thing. There's the Valley of Eternal Spring. There's all these things that are like potentially a direct reference to Greek mythology, but slamming it all together doesn't exist anywhere in mythology. You can see all of these little tiny pieces that they've mixed together to make this really cool place that doesn't follow Greek mythology religiously, which is good. It is good, especially for people probably like me who don't know a lot about it, but are still very interested in it. Probably have played other games that have some sort of Greek mythology in it, but having this fresh take and you can still enjoy the story for what it is, for its new look on it. Uh, mixed with the, the art style, I think it looks amazing. I did read an interview and basically they, they were inspired by a lot of those early 2000s open world platformers. The art style for them was said to be like Banjo-Kazooie meets Studio Ghibli. I think that's cool. It's like yeah. kind of kind of painterly and it kind of helps with the uh, features and themes of, you know, helping gods, all that stuff. Because <laughs> it's not too, it's not taking itself too seriously, but it's not cheesy. They showed like this panorama shot of just the Golden Isle and how beautiful it really does look. And I think that's really going to be enjoyable when you're flying through each area, when you're trying to find certain things in certain areas, it's going to be very easy to find. And you can also use that far side ability to like, you know, look like deeper into the landscape and stuff and then clearly see that there's different areas. The Forge Lands uh, are, are uh, Festus's area. And that's all, you know, you know, metal and fire and automatons and, and things like that. So each area is going to feel super different based on the god that area represents. And if you remember from the announcement trailer, we did see that big volcano, right? And it kind of looked like it was taking over the land. Now that we're seeing some gameplay, we can definitely tell that it is taking over. So I feel already like there's a lot of pressure here. So in the gameplay trailer, the first mission that we kind of see is you need to reignite Hephaestus's forge. And Hephaestus was the god of like blacksmithing and stuff. So we're, we're going in and reigniting this forge. We have to fight uh, an automaton, which is something that Hephaestus made. Again, it's like a, you know, it's like a robot, but early robots. They were talking about robots in ancient Greece, which I think is so cool. So the vaults of Tartarus are probably my 
favorite things so far personally because I love puzzles. Obviously the combat is looking great and stuff like that, but adding this element where I have to use these same abilities that we've used in combat for a puzzle is just really interesting to me. So they're testing your brains and your brawn and that is kind of what it means to be you know, powerful, right? You're learning skills and abilities and it's a kind of a feedback loop where you may have used them before, but not in this way. And then you get back out of these vaults into the, the, the Golden Isles, the larger world of Golden Isles, and you're utilizing these new, these new skills, you know, using the, the wings of Daedalus mixed with, you know, one of your other abilities maybe. So obviously once you get through the puzzle, it's not for nothing. Your reward is Zeus's lightning and it levels up Phoenix's stamina, which is really important because she uses Daedalus's wings to fly and that stamina meter kind of determines how long she can fly. So the combat is, uh, it comes down to three core weapons, your, your sword, your ax, and your bow. It seems like you can play the way that you want to play, depending upon what your play style is. Your sword is, and, and your axe are your, you know, lighter attack weapons, and then your bow is obviously ranged. You have a lot of these god power attacks that are that are super deep in, in you know, the mythology themselves. You can use Athena's dash, uh, Apollo is the god of archery, um, Hephaestus, we talked about him, but he's, you know, you're using his blacksmithing hammer to beat the crap out of stuff. It means that there's gonna be a lot of variety when we actually are fighting against certain bosses. We have a lot of utility, we have movement, we have air combos, we have ground combos. I'm really loving that they're making these abilities complement each other. You're gonna feel very godlike in this game because of these abilities. And again, you know, upgrading all of them is going to be very deep in the mythos as well. I mean, you get you get coins of Sharon. Sharon is the, the boatman on the River of Styx, like the river that, you know, transports souls to the land of the dead. Adamantine is the, it's the metal that all of the gods' weapons are made out of. Um, Prometheus's chains are made out of it, so you're using that to upgrade some of these abilities as well. I just think it's so cool how deep the mythos is with all of this stuff. So we saw in a few shots, you know, once we're taking flight, we see another little birdie fly next to us, but that's actually Phosphorus, and that's not just a random bird. That is gonna be our friend. I mean, I always love having a good companion in every game. You know, Phosphorus has got my back. Yeah, Phoenix being accompanied by a Phoenix is really cool. So you can actually summon Phosphorus to help you in combat as well. So while the bird looks super pretty, it actually is uh, tactically good for you as well. So the trials are puzzles around the Golden Isles um, that reward you upon completion points of Sharon. You know, you can go to the Hall of the Gods and upgrade all of your abilities with that currency. So the Vaults of Tartarus give us Zeus's lightning, which increases our stamina, but if we want to increase our weapon damage and, you know, some of the other godly abilities, we have to pay the boatman, as it were. And there are different types of puzzles, so I'm really curious to see where it goes and to see just how powerful Phoenix is going to be, because she's out there working, look at her, pumping some <laughs> iron, she's glowing right the now, she's got the juice, you know? <laughs> the 90s training montage, she's pumping iron, she's pumping gold, actually. She's like making potions, she's a blacksmith. Phoenix is the total package. The Hall of the Gods actually has something that definitely caught my eye because I saw a little comb and a little scissor <laughs> over there and it's Aphrodite's beauty chair where you can customize your character and this is the first time we kind of get confirmation that you can make your character whoever you want them to be. Yeah, apparently you can be male or female. Um, and I mean, you know, you sit down in Aphrodite's beauty chair, you're gonna look good. <laughs> Absolutely. Also at the Hall of the Gods, we can use Adamantine to upgrade um, some of our, I guess, armor maybe, or, or some of our other things that we haven't actually seen in this in this trailer. We're upgrading our, our skills using the coins. Uh, Adamantine's used to upgrade some of the loot elements. So obviously, I'm super excited about the mythology. You're excited about the gameplay. What do you think? How, how, how deep into this game are you going to get? It kind of hits all of the boxes that I enjoy in a game. Combat is looking smooth, it's looking versatile, it's in general looking very pretty, colorful, fresh. It's giving me options to customize, it's giving me room for growth. It's kind of doing everything that I like in a game, so I'm really, really interested to see or actually get my hands on it this December. December 3rd. <laughs>